The Catholic practice of honoring Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a tradition that dates back to the early centuries of Christianity. For many non-Catholics, this practice can seem perplexing or even idolatrous. Why would Catholics direct prayers to Mary rather than solely to God or Jesus? This video will delve into the theological, historical, and devotional reasons behind this long-standing Catholic practice. At its core, the Catholic practice of honoring Mary is rooted in several key theological principles, amongst which are Intercession of the Saints Catholics believe in the communion of saints, the spiritual union of all the members of the Church, both living and deceased, who form one mystical body in Christ. This is based on biblical passages like 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 to 27 which speak of all believers being united as members of the one body of Christ. Within this communion, Catholics believe the saints in heaven can intercede for those still on earth, as seen in Revelation 5 verse 8 which depicts the prayers of the saints being offered before God's throne. Just as Christians ask fellow believers on earth to pray for them, Catholics extend this practice to also include seeking the intercession of saints in heaven, with Mary being preeminent among them. Mary as the first and greatest disciple. Catholics honor Mary as the first and greatest of all the disciples of Christ. Her pivotal role in salvation history, as the mother of the Savior and the first to believe in him, Luke 1 verse 45, accords her a singular status. Catholics see Mary as the preeminent example of loving God and saying yes to his will. Her statement, May it be done to me according to your word, Luke 1 verse 38, in response to the angel Gabriel's message is seen as the perfect response of faith. The church looks to Mary as the model par excellence of what it means to believe in and follow Jesus. By her faithful discipleship, she precedes and represents the church as a whole. Lumen Gentium a document of the Second Vatican Council calls Mary a preeminent and wholly unique member of the Church and our Mother in the Order of Grace. Mary's Unique Relationship with Christ The Catholic Church also emphasizes Mary's utterly unique relationship with Jesus Christ as his mother. The early Church professed Mary to be the Mother of God at the Council of Ephesus in AD 431, not meaning that Mary precedes God but that the one conceived and born of her is truly God incarnate. This title points to the profound reality that the Savior of the world chose to enter human history through Mary, taking his flesh and human nature from her. He spent the first thirty years of his life with Mary, and as a faithful Jew, Jesus would have honored his mother in fulfillment of the commandment. Luke 2 verse 51, Exodus 20 verse 12 Seen in this light, Mary is not just another saint, but has an unparalleled bond with Christ. Vatican II states, The Father of Mercies willed that the Incarnation should be preceded by the acceptance of her who was predestined to be the mother of his Son. In God's plan, Mary's free cooperation was essential to the Incarnation of the Divine Word. This lends even greater weight to her intercessory role. Biblical Basis While Mary is not frequently mentioned in the Bible compared to Christ and the Apostles, the references to her are highly significant. Taken together, these passages form the foundation for the Catholic understanding of Mary's crucial place in God's plan of salvation. Proto-Evangelium, Genesis 3 verse 15 In God's judgment upon the serpent after the fall, he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The Church Fathers saw this as the first announcement of the Gospel with the woman's offspring being Christ who will decisively defeat Satan. While the woman refers immediately to Eve, Catholics see this typologically pointing ahead to Mary, the new Eve, who by her obedience undoes the disobedience of the first Eve. As Eve was the physical mother of all humanity, Mary becomes the spiritual mother of all who are made alive in Christ, the new Adam, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22. When the angel Gabriel appears to Mary, he greets her as full of grace, or highly favored one. This suggests that prior to the Annunciation, Mary was already filled with God's grace in a singular way, being prepared for her unique vocation. Mary's response to the angel's message, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word, indicates her perfect openness to God's will. Her fiat reverses Eve's disobedience, making possible humanity's redemption in Christ. 
The church sees this as the pivotal moment in history when Mary's free consent allows the eternal word to become incarnate in her womb. The Visitation, Luke 1 verses 39 to 45. When Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth, she is greeted with the words, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, recognizes the blessed status of Mary as the God-bearer. Her words are incorporated into the Hail Mary prayer. The Magnificat, Luke 1 verses 46 to 55. In response, Mary proclaims the Magnificat, her great hymn of praise. She says, Henceforth all generations will call me blessed. This is taken as biblical warrant for honoring Mary throughout history, as indeed she is acclaimed in every generation of the church. The Magnificat also reveals Mary's deep faith and knowledge of the scriptures, particularly the Old Testament promises of God's salvation. She sees these being fulfilled in the child she will bear, as God has filled the hungry with good things. When Jesus is presented in the temple, Simeon prophesies to Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. This foreshadows Mary's intimate sharing in the redemptive mission of her son, which will climax at the cross. The wedding feast at Cana marks the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. When the wine runs out, it is Mary who notices the need and brings it to Jesus' attention with the words, They have no wine. Then she instructs the servants, Do whatever he tells you. For Catholics, this reveals Mary's attentive concern and maternal intercession as well as her role in leading others to obey Christ. Her words, do whatever he tells you, are seen as her message to all disciples. Pope John Paul II saw Kinna as highlighting Mary's special maternal mediation, mother of the Redeemer. As Jesus is crucified, he entrusts Mary to the beloved disciple with the words, woman, behold your son, and to the disciple, behold your mother. From the earliest centuries, the church understood this as Jesus giving Mary as a spiritual mother to all disciples, symbolized by John. Mary's presence at the cross shows the depth of her union with her son in his redemptive suffering. As the new Eve, she is the woman whose seed will crush the serpent's head, Genesis 3 verse 15, but only through sharing in her son's passion. By her compassionate suffering with Christ, Mary cooperates uniquely in the work of redemption. The Upper Room Acts 1 verse 14. After Jesus' ascension, Mary is found praying with the apostles in the upper room as they await the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Her presence as the church is born and goes forth to evangelize is highly significant. As Pope John Paul II notes, in the upper room too, Mary appears as the guardian of Jesus' heritage. Thus, she who was present at the beginning remains a constant presence as the church journeys on. Woman of Revelation Revelation 12. Catholics see the woman clothed with the sun in Revelation 12 as a complex symbol encompassing Mary, the Church, and the people of God throughout history. Specific connections with Mary include the woman giving birth to the Messiah, Revelation 12 verse 5, and the dragon that stands ready to devour the child as soon as it is born, paralleling Herod's attempt to kill the infant Jesus, Revelation 12 verse 4, Matthew 2 verse 16. The flight of the woman into the wilderness, Revelation 12 verse 6, evokes Mary and Joseph's flight to Egypt with the child Jesus to escape Herod, Matthew 2 verses 13 to 15. The woman's offspring are described as those who keep the commandments of God and bear testimony to Jesus, Revelation 12 verse 17, again pointing to Mary's spiritual motherhood of all faithful disciples.